Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make Pat Sucre. This is a pastry which is used for sweet pastry tarts. The type of tart that you make where you bake the pastry and then you put a filling in and you don't bake that filling. Um, and it's a, obviously a French pastry, you can tell that from the name Pat Sucre. Uh, it's very very good. It does take some time and you have to be a little bit careful um, with it, but it will work very well. And I'm going to make the, the pastry tart cases and then I'll do a separate video on some fit one or two fillings for those tart cases. So I'm making these now um, because I just thought uh, little tarts, individual tarts or mini tarts like this might be good for uh, Valentine's Day or something like that or uh, maybe even for serving at Easter with some sort of uh, sweet fillings in them. So I'll go on to the ingredients and for this I have 300 grams which is one cup plus five tablespoons of uh, soft unsalted butter. I have 190 grams one and a half cups plus two and a half tablespoons of icing sugar 500 grams, which is three and one third cups based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour. I have 60 grams, which is two thirds of a cup minus one teaspoon of ground almonds. I have 120 grams of egg. So what I did was I uh, broke open three medium eggs or large in the USA I whisked them together and then I weighed out 120 grams that left me with 30 grams of egg left over which I can use for something else um, but uh, you could try to just use two medium eggs or two large eggs in the USA if you want to that might leave you just a little bit short, um, but if you think the dough is not quite right, you can add a drop of milk to make up for that. I have one and a half grams, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and here I have uh, two grams, one teaspoon of vanilla powder. Now, if you don't have vanilla powder, but you still want a slight vanilla flavor to your pastry, you could use five millilitres, a teaspoon of vanilla extract and remove a teaspoon of your egg so that you, you keep the, the liquid uh, volume the same. So that's all the ingredients. But before I go on to make the pastry, let me talk about the pastry rings. Here I have two different types of pastry rings. This is actually a crumpet ring, but it works well as a pastry ring. And as you can see, um, it has no base and it has solid sides. This is a, a pastry ring which is perforated around the edge. And again, it has no base. Now, if you have uh, individual tart cases with a removable bottom, you can also use those. I'll explain the difference between these. With this perforated one, um, I'm going to stand the pastry on... Uh, a silicon mat which uh, is also perforated and that means that I'm, uh, when I bake the pastry I don't need to prick it at all. With this one because it doesn't have the perforated sides it won't cook in quite the same way and so what I will do with that is I will prick that. Now if I was standing both of these on silicon mats which uh, weren't perforated I would prick them uh, both but anyway I'll show you I'll talk more about that when we get on to it so the first thing to do is to uh, make our pastry and uh, we're going to start off with the butter and then the icing sugar and I'm using a, a bowl a medium sized bowl I could use a larger one but um, I want to try to get the the pastry or the butter mixed well with my hand mixer. You could do this with a stand mixer, um, but I think a hand mixer should work just fine. So 
so I'm going to uh, whisk the butter and get that sort of quite fluffy before I add the icing sugar. Because my butter was nice and soft that took virtually no time. So then I'm going to sift in the icing sugar and I'll put that into my sieve and this is just to make sure that there's no little clumps of icing sugar really and I'm going to whisk that to get it fully combined. And I'm going to start on a low speed, otherwise the icing sugar is just going to um, go everywhere. So that's good enough. And then I'm going to add in my egg. I'm going to whisk that to get it combined. And that didn't take long and it may look as though it split a little bit but that is fine i'm just going to scrape that to make sure we get any mixture at the bottom mixed in And then I'm going to put in the ground almonds, the salt and the vanilla powder. And I'm going to whisk them again to get those combined. And again that took very little time so the last thing to go in is the flour and I'm going to mix this on a low speed until it clumps together basically And that's clumped together into a thick paste so that's good enough I just scraped down my beaters And I'll just scrape that together and I'm going to divide that into three pieces and wrap them each in plastic wrap. So that's one third of my dough which is um, actually about 390 grams and I'm going to cover that with the plastic wrap I'm going to just flatten it into a disc like that and I'm going to chill that and do the same with the, uh, the other two pieces of dough 
and I'm going to chill it in the fridge overnight basically uh, so that it gets nice and cold and then tomorrow I'm going to come back and we will roll this out put it into our tart rings and bake them. My pastry has been in the fridge overnight it's quite firm now and I've taken out one piece I had three pieces if you remember I've taken out one piece and I put it onto a floured surface lightly floured and I'm actually going to roll it out between parchment paper but I've actually floured the parchment paper as well so I'm going to start off just because it's firm just pressing it a little bit to soften it up and it may crack a bit when I roll it but it will soon come together if it cracks it's because it's uh, it's cold basically so I'm going to roll this out and I want to roll it out um, until it's between two and three millimeters um, in size in thickness sorry um, which is very thin as you can imagine and I have some guides here which are three millimeters so if I can get it to that thickness I can then remove the guides and roll it just a little bit more to make it even thinner and I should say that if as you work with this it starts to get sticky um, it's too warm and you can simply stop what you're doing and put the pastry back into the fridge and chill it for a little bit before you continue so that's three millimeters so I'm just going to roll it a little bit more like that and then I'm going to take my eight centimeter rings and I'm going to cut some circles like that and I'm going to remove the excess dough and these circles these discs will be the base of our tarts and they will work for the crumpet rings and for uh, the perforated rings but if you have your own little tart tins with a base on you can roll them out and it will work for those as well and with uh, eight rolled out I've, I've got more pastry and I can do more but I'm going to cover those with some plastic wrap and put them into the fridge to chill And then I'm going to lightly flour the surface and I'm going to roll out the excess pastry from this portion and it's quite soft now so um, it's a bit sticky and I could chill it but I'm going to roll this out um, as long as I can basically And I'm going to cut it into strips and the strips are going to be uh, wider than the height of my pastry rings
and those strips that that's four there they will be enough to line the side of four of my rings and with the the other pastry i will do the same so i'm going to put this into the fridge and i'm going to put my discs into the fridge covered while i work on the the remainder and i'm going to chill them then and i'm going to chill them for at least an hour i want them nice and firm before i work with them again so then I, after an hour i will come back and i will uh put the pastry into the rings and then they're gonna, going to be chilled again before we actually bake them so it's been an hour now um and my dough has been chilling so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um simply take my rings i'll do them individually um, and just rub some butter on the inside of them like that and then i'm going to take one of my strips of pastry and i'm going to wrap that on the inside and press it against the side like that and where it's joining I'm going to just wet a finger with a little drop of water and create rub rub the pastry then I'll cut off the excess like that and I'm going to press that together so I'm pressing around the edge like that and then I'm going to take one of my discs and I'm going to put that on the inside but before I do I'm going to just brush a little bit of water around that and around the the bottom of the the pastry that's already in the ring and I'm going to fold this down into the ring and I'm going to push it against the side to seal it I'll just wet my finger and rub that over pastry to make it smooth against the side just like that I'm going to do the same with the remainder so I have now filled six of my rings with the perforations on and two of the rings uh, which are solid around the sides one of the rings that's solid around the side I have stood on a perforated mat with the the six perforated ones and the other uh, solid one I have simply put on some baking paper on a baking tray um, so that I can show you the different ways of doing it so for the six which are perforated I don't have to do anything else except chill them for the one um, which has got the um, solid sides but uh, on the perforation I don't think I need to do anything but I am going to simply prick that on the base 
For the one that's on the baking tray, I'm going to prick that on the base. And I should reiterate, if your pastry gets soft, stop what you're doing and put it in the fridge. And with that pricked like that, I'm going to put all of these back into the fridge and I'm going to chill them for at least two hours. I may chill them for four hours, but at least two hours. I want them to be very cold and very firm. Then I'd um, come back and would cut the slice the top, the excess pastry off, and they'd be ready to bake. And so I will have my oven preheating at that stage to 180 degrees Celsius, 160 Celsius with a fan, 350 Fahrenheit, and they will be ready to, to bake. But I'll come back once I'm ready to do that. So my oven is now preheating and um, I've taken my chilled uh, pastries out of the fridge and I'm going to cut the tops off the, that excess pastry. So with the excess pastry cut off, for this one which is on the baking tray um, without a perforated mat, I've got some parchment paper which I'm going to just push into the pastry like that and then I'm going to fill that with some rice which I keep for blind baking. like that and then I'm going to put all of those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 15 minutes and the one which I'm blind baking like that I will then take the uh, paper out of that with the rice and I'll put it back in the oven and bake it for a further three or four minutes until the inside becomes baked. So I've baked these for 15 minutes. Uh, the sides just puffed a little bit and I think that's because maybe my pastry was a little bit too thick but it's fine. So what I have here is um, an egg yolk with a, a teaspoon of um, cream in it which I've beaten together and I'm going to brush the inside and then the out the outer edge or the yeah the outside edge of each of these with that and I'm going to bake them again now you don't have to do this they're ready to eat as they are but if you want to you can and that's what I'm going to do So I brush them all over with egg or egg yolk and cream. So there I have mine brushed with egg including the one which was blind baked. And I'm going to put those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for another eight minutes and then after eight minutes I'll take them out of the oven and allow them to cool down and I'll come back and show you what they look like then. So I baked my tart cases for a further eight minutes with the egg and cream wash on them and I've taken them out of the oven and put them on a wire rack but I also baked uh, an 8 inch 20 centimeter version as well and I have that on the wire rack so I'll show you what they look like. So this is the uh, 20 centimeter one which I baked and here I have my individual ones I actually got 14 out of those and they baked up quite nicely um, and the second batch, the, the, the second six, I actually did get the pastry just that little bit thinner. Um, and the underside is baked nicely, nice and crisp as you can see. Uh, so that's going to uh, be it for this particular uh, recipe. And then in the following days, um, I'm going to make some fillings 
to put into these tart cases and I'll do videos for those. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there'll be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.